Hello, this DEEK training video is part one of the SLURM job submission process review, focusing specifically on SLURM batch scripts and their components. On the DEEK cluster, jobs are submitted as batch scripts from head nodes to the scheduler, SLURM. These batch scripts execute accordingly based upon resource availability and priority. Batch scripts are comprised of two primary parts, commands and directives. We will now review each of these sections with a basic example script. The command section of the batch script is executed on the assigned node resources. It is written in a basic scripting language as identified by the interpreter directive, usually bash. Along with executable commands, establishing environment settings, and variables can also be done here. The simplest method to use when figuring out what to include in this section of your batch script is to replicate all of the steps and commands required for your desired job to run on a head nodes command line interface. This example's command line section outlines common steps for most jobs loading an environment module, setting environment variables, logging information to output, and executing the primary command, MATLAB in this example. <laughs> Prior to the command section, SLURM directives provide resource metadata used to determine when and where to launch your job. Think of these as glorified comments, only recognized by the scheduler. Directives are prefaced with the sbatch syntax at the beginning of your script. They can also be given on the command line to override content within a batch script, but as a best practice, it is recommended that you only use those directives contained within your batch script. The example script contains the most commonly found and recommended directives. As a best practice, we recommend using the long notation of each directive for legibility, but short form options are available. For each entry, we will review its purpose, show its short form notation with entry format, as well as default value, if applicable. The job name directive defines the name of your job as it will be tracked in SLURM. Names are preferred for keeping track of the many jobs you will have running on the cluster. They are visible with the queue listing, job information, and notification emails. The partition directive defines which partition your job is set to run on. Remember that your requested resources must meet the limitations of each partition to successfully run. If they do not, the job will be cancelled. If no entry is provided for the partition, your job will automatically attempt to run on the debug partition. The account directive specifies which group fair share value is assigned to the submitted job. It will charge the requested resources against the group's overall effective usage. If no account is provided, the user's default group account is used. This account can be determined by running the command s account manager list user username. These four directives are the recommended methods of providing required resource information for your job. The nodes directive is most commonly used to specify the number of nodes required. If your job can use a, ver a varied number of nodes, then a min-max notation can be provided. By default, if no entry is given, SLURM will assign the number of nodes based on the tasks per node entry, but this is not recommended. The time directive defines the amount of time required for the job to run. This equates to wall time from torque, and there is no need to calculate CPU time within SLURM. The default value assigned is equal to a partition's maximum allowed time. This is poor practice, 
as that value is most likely much greater than what is needed and will impact your job's assigned priority value. The N tasks per node or tasks per node directive defines how many cores will be consumed on a node. It is meant to be used in conjunction with the node's directive value. If no entry is made, the current configuration will cause your job submission to fail. The MEM directive is the only entry needed to allocate the amount of memory required per node. There is no short form notation or default value. This entry is required. Values can be entered as a plain number in bytes or in short form gig, meg, or kilobyte notation. These directives configure job email notifications. They are highly recommended to be included in your script, but not required. The mail user directive assigns an email address to send notifications as defined in the mail type directive. The mail type directive identifies which run stages to send email notifications. Most commonly listed are begin end and fail. Other valid options for notification are none, requeue, stage out, time limit, time limit 90, 80, 50, and all. These three directives configure job logging and output. They are recommended to be included in your script. The WorkDir directive ensures a common location for Slurm job output files. Command created output files are created in this path only if a full file path is not specified or a directory change has not been made. The default WorkDir location is the current working directory from the job submission point. This path is represented by the environment variable pwd. The output directive logs all standard output that the batch script produces to the specified file in the workdir path. Essentially, if the job is run manually on command line, all non-error messages that appear is what gets logged to this output file. The default name is slurm job ID dot out, where percent %j represents the job ID's inclusion. The error directive logs all standard error messages that the batch script produces to the specified file. The default name is the same as the output directive's default, meaning by default only one output file will be created containing both standard output and error information. The constraint directive is used to specify required features for a node to be assigned to a job. Constraints are assigned by system administrators. View part three of this training series to learn how to display assigned node features. Multiple constraints may be specified in a single statement with the use of AND or logic. It is highly recommended that you view online documentation both on our user wiki and through support portals to learn how to correctly use this logic. With directives and commands set, your batch script is ready to run on the cluster. This concludes part one of the Slurm job submission process review. Please send any questions or comments via email to deekhelp at wfu.edu. Thank you.